Hello, I'm Jill Constantine, and welcome to this week's edition of Community College News. On today's show, we have news regarding America's Piracy Act, and a local artist takes a shot at a $10,000 prize. But first, the school district near you is going to have some major changes. The province is reorganizing all of the school districts and cutting jobs. Tony Bourgeois met with officials at the Education District Council about the local impact. District 14 is already the largest district in New Brunswick. It will soon be part of a much larger district, only one of four Anglophone districts in the province. The provincial government will reduce the number of districts from 14 to 7. Nine English districts will be reduced to four, and five Francophone districts will be cut to three. Not a loss of service. Uh, it's a chance for a different reconfiguration of service. Both Tingley and Diane LaVertue, chair of the DEC for District 14, believe parents have nothing to fear from the restructuring. Education Minister Jody Carr says up to 70 to 100 jobs will be lost. Superintendent of District 14, John Tingley, says most employees will be moved or retired and not laid off. To, uh, for jobs to be redistributed throughout the system. Um, it, it can be done through attrition, uh, retirement, redeployment, retraining. So Tingley says with support from the town of Woodstock, they hope job losses will be minimal. The Virtue hopes that the province will keep the local district office open. The province says that the money saved will reach about $5 million and promises to keep all that money back into the schools. In Woodstock, Tony Bourgeois, Community College News. It's National Non-Smoking Week. Smokers across the country were encouraged to take a break from their nicotine habit. Jocelyn Turner has more. Trying to quit smoking is difficult. National Non-Smoking Week has three goals. Raising awareness about the health risks of smoking, discouraging non-smokers from taking up the deadly habit, and encouraging smokers to quit. But most smokers are not taking the non-smoking challenge. Uh, non-smoking week to me really doesn't mean a lot because I smoke, um, but I think it's good to promote non-smoking, especially in uh, kids. Non-smoking week may be having an impact. All age groups are butting out. Over the past decade, the number of smokers between the ages of 15 and 19 has fallen. Smokers aged 20 to 24 only saw a slight decrease in numbers. Smokers 25 and over also saw a significant drop. Former smoker Debbie Bustard says the journey to staying smoke-free is a long and hard one. Staying busy helped with the cravings. She says the ability to quit depends heavily on personal willpower. Yeah, I think it's a matter of making up your mind what you want to do. I was, I was pretty near a two-pack day smoker. And I just decided that I didn't want to do this the rest of my life. Buster says non-smoking week has the potential to be more successful. But Buster says it starts with really wanting to make that big change. Certain ones that really want to quit, they probably, some will quit. The government of New Brunswick will be expanding its clinical smoking cessation program. The program has seen 20% more people quit smoking since it started in 2009. The expansion will include new cessation training for healthcare professionals. Similar programs exist in PEI and Nova Scotia. Providing smokers with more resources could see an increase of kicking the habit. In Woodstock, Jocelyn Turner, Community College News. The American government is looking to crack down on internet piracy. On Wednesday, many of the Internet's high-traffic sites, like Wikipedia and Reddit, blacked out their sites to protest the bill. Kyle DuPont reports. The Stop Online Piracy Act, SOPA, has been generating a lot of concern. Many worry the law may be too restrictive to anyone sharing information on the Internet. Blaine Tompkins is concerned about what this may mean. Uh, we live in a time when, when the information exchange has been greater than it's ever been ever in the, war, in the history of, of mankind. And, you know, there's a real threat that this could hamper uh, information sharing. If SOPA is passed, many of the sites used every day could be shut down. Some fear how far reaching enforcement could go. Tompkins believes our right to privacy may be infringed upon even here in Canada. So if you're going to force Bell to um, give your internet traffic or your, the, the information that you send through your router at home, um, that's dangerous, right? Because there could be lots of things in there that a movie company or a software company or the police necessarily don't have the right to have access to. Many young people feel that this law would threaten their freedom and rights to information. We visited with the IT students at the college to see what their views were on this situation. 
wouldn't have access to the same things we normally would have. Sharing has a good deal to do with it, and I don't agree with piracy, so to say, but I think, too, one of the big issues here is that the whole idea behind the internet is the free exchange of information. And We're buying it to keep in business. We need to have say at the end of the day. Like the black that happened yesterday, it, it dropped, uh, I just read on Reddit, uh, 13, 13 congressmen dropped the bill. Despite this move, many sites such as Pirate Bay, where users freely access movies, music, and television, say they will not be affected by the law. Those who use the internet will likely find ways to continue to share information. In Woodstock, Kyle DuPont, Community College News. Some people may still be regretting that second serving of turkey dinner over the holidays, but the new year gives us all a chance to make better decisions. Ethan Hazlitt reports that thousands of New Brunswickers are hitting the treadmill. It's still only January, and some people are already struggling to keep their New Year's resolutions. Nutritionist John Cummings says one of the first resolutions to be broken is the commitment to lose weight. He sees more people coming in during the first few weeks of the year for counseling. He says people without a plan have more trouble dropping those extra pounds. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't stick to the resolutions. I wish a lot of them would, but a lot of that is based on uh, not having the right planning. He sees firsthand how the lack of planning can sabotage a person's efforts to be healthy. When it comes to weight loss, really there's only 5% of people that actually are successful with their weight loss unless they have a program to actually help them and guide them along the same way. The holiday season is always a busy one for local gyms. That's when they sell a large number of memberships. Caleb Hickey comes to the gym for three main reasons. Oh, getting in shape and um, being healthy and looking better, I guess. More people head to the gym in the first few weeks, but Cummings says the numbers start to drop fast. He says people get bored with it or just get too busy to stay with it. He says there are two things people can do to increase their chances of keeping their resolutions is to plan and prepare as well. And if you're, on, if you're planning on a regular basis, you can make sure that you're all ready to go at all times. And that's the best advice I can actually give. Even though the odds are stacked against them, with access to personal trainers and consultants, the success rate of people getting fit is on the rise, according to Cummings. He says awareness about the unseen benefits of healthy living, like increased brain activity, has led more people to stick to their resolutions. In Woodstock, Ethan Hazlitt, Community College News. Chances are you or someone you know will be affected by a disease that strikes half a million Canadians. As Martin Poirier reports, it is an illness that will touch twice as many people in the next decade. Hundreds of people lined up at the Riverview Lions Club to support the Alzheimer's Society of Southeast New Brunswick. Families and friends gather to enjoy a hearty breakfast. Many people here have a family member or friend that has been affected by the disease. Well-known musicians Ivan and Vivian Hicks and the Sussex Avenue Fiddlers provided the entertainment. From the cooks to the servers, volunteers made sure the lineup moved along quickly. Had a really nice turnout. They did a good job getting some tickets and doing the advertising in advance to help with, uh, you know, getting people here this morning. And it's just a great opportunity to come out, be a part of the community, see old friends, have a great meal, and uh, support a great cause. A survey released by the Alzheimer's Society says that Canadians are still dismissing symptoms of dementia as old age. Close to 50% of Canadians with symptoms of dementia waited a year or more before seeing a doctor because they were either afraid or thought the symptoms would just go away. Alzheimer's disease can strike men and women of all races and is not a regular part of aging. Three out of four people with Alzheimer's are women. Alzheimer's disease has always been a topic that's really difficult to raise awareness on. I think we've come a really uh, long way in the last few years um, because we've, we're trying to create that environment where it's okay to talk about it. By the year 2038, the Alzheimer's Society of Canada says there will be a new case of dementia every two minutes and over a million Canadians will have the disease. A program called Let's Face It has been launched by the society that focuses on the importance of early diagnosis. In Riverview, Martin Poirier, Community College News. When most people think of woodworking, they picture tables, chairs and cabinets. But one local artist is thinking big and hoping it pays off. Jeff Stairs has more. When you visit Cary O'Toole's Grafton Workshop, you can't help but feel a little closer to nature. Carvings and sculptures of wildlife fill the space. 
O'Toole has transformed trees into works of art for almost 40 years. And recently, he's been thinking about his legacy. I mean, we all want to leave something behind. Right? Any artist wants their pieces to be uh, appreciated. And, and, I mean, when I'm gone, I mean, I mean, the only thing left behind is what I've made in the past, right? O'Toole has been busy working on his latest submission to the Kingsbury Garden Sculpture Competition. If he's successful, his work will be on permanent display to visitors of the St. Andrews facility. It's great exposure. Some of these artists are emerging artists. Some of them are well established. But um, it's just great for their art and, and great for sculpture um, to have this, um, I guess, this attention drawn to the work they do. O'Toole won the Kingsbury Sculpture Competition and the $10,000 prize that comes with it in 2009. This year, he's trading in the familiar for something a little different. This year I decided to do uh, a butterfly sculpture and normally I work in wood but this year I'm going to do metal. Uh, Ray Black and Newbert. O'Toole has until the end of spring to complete his submission and deliver it to St. Andrews. The top prize will be awarded June 14th. In Woodstock, Jeff Stairs, Community College News. That's our show for today. Send us your story ideas at jschoolmbcc at gmail.com and see more of our work at jschoolmbcc.ca. Thanks for watching.